So I put together this presentation today to give you um, an overview of the Coast Guard type approval process, the steps that EchoClore has taken as we've moved towards, <clears throat> excuse me, Coast Guard type approval, and then our expectations in the future as we move closer to Coast Guard type approval. I will point out that the previous presentation actually really did a great job of highlighting some of the differences between IMO type approval and Coast Guard type approval, which I think will become clear as I go through the presentation. <clears throat> so first, I'm just going to give you a really brief kind of background about Echochlor, just to familiarize you with our company. Um, our company was formed in 2001, and we make a ballast water treatment system that uses patented chlorine dioxide technology. So we treat ballast water in two steps, it's first filtration and then it's injection of chlorine dioxide into the ballast line. And we use chlorine dioxide because it's really highly effective. And it's very effective regardless of changes in water quality. So we don't need to change how our system operates based on turbidity, salinity, temperature changes, nor do we change the dose. Our first shipboard installations were performed in 2004 and then again in 2006. So we've had a fairly long operational history. <clears throat> we received our IMO type approval in 2011. We did our testing at NIOS, a facility in the Netherlands. And we received our approval through the German administration. Echochlor then received US Coast Guard AMS acceptance in 2013. And that allows vessels to operate our treatment system for a period of five years after the vessel's compliance date, or until Echochlor receives Coast Guard type approval. Uh, since around 2013, we started these beginning stages of investigating and pursuing Coast Guard type approval. And we've been going through that process until today. Um, we expect to submit our application towards the summer of 2016. And the rest of the presentation is going to get into the actual details of uh, the type approval process. So the whole process started in 2013 with the selection of an independent laboratory. So the Coast Guard uses this independent laboratory to ensure the independence in the test process. The IL oversees the test process, and they, they are essentially operating the system and ensure the manufacturer isn't involved as testing is performed. In 2013, when we started to look into selecting our independent laboratory, there were two to choose from. One of them was NSF, and the second was DNVGL. Um, one of our motivations as we were going through Coast Guard type approval was to also secure class society approval if possible. Um, so for that reason, we selected DNVGL as our independent laboratory that we've been working with as we've gone through the process. Then, after we had selected our IL, um, we still had to select the actual test facilities where we'd be performing the testing. There's three major types of testing that we're doing under Coast Guard type approval, similar to the IMO process, uh, land-based testing, shipboard testing, and then environmental testing. So both the land-based and shipboard testing are performed to demonstrate the system can meet discharge criteria, and then the, sh the environmental testing is performed you expose basically portions of the system to different environmental conditions, temperature extremes, vibration, humidity, et cetera, and demonstrate that the system can withstand those conditions. So we selected the Golden Bear facility in Vallejo, California for our land-based and our shipboard testing. We selected them for two reasons. Um, first, they were located in the United States, and we fami were familiar with their facility. So logistically, it was a little bit easier for us, and we were comfortable with the, the staff and the scientists that were working there. They also gave us the ability to do both our land base and shipboard tests at the same location. So some manufacturers are doing uh, installing a system for land based testing and then using a commercial installation to do their shipboard testing. For us, we were able to do it at one location. We expected that would save us some time, hopefully, and also save us a little money with this, the type approval process. We selected Retliff Laboratories in New York to perform our environmental testing. Similarly, they were located in the United States. They were located fairly close to our manufacturing, which is in the east coast of the United States. Um, we had worked with them in the past, and we were also familiar with their facility and, and their staff, and we were happy with their work. So over the course of 2014, we selected those facilities, and we also started to put together the system that we would be using for uh, testing for our land-based and shipboard testing. 
in the end of 2014, we submitted our letter of intent to the Coast Guard. Uh, so that letter of intent gave the Coast Guard an overview of our testing program, the test facilities that we plan to use, and when we would initiate testing. Uh, my understanding is to date, I think 32 manufacturers have submitted letters of intent to the Coast Guard, or at least that, that was what I've seen recently. And actually in February of 2016, I've seen an indication from the Coast Guard they're only aware of actually 16 manufacturers that are currently undergoing testing. So it just gives you kind of a framework for who's going through this process or how many people are going through this process. So once we had that all lined up and we had our system built, our installation occurred in February of 2015, so just the beginning of last year. Uh, here we of our system as it's being delivered to the Golden Bear facility. Our system is located in that shipping container you can see being lifted onto the vessel. Uh, the shipping container has our big Equiclor logo on it. And I've included this just to give you an idea of a typical shipboard installation. Typically, our filter would be installed in close proximity to the ballast pumps, either in the engine room or in a cargo pump room. And then our treatment system, was con which consists of those two chemical storage tanks, can't actually point to it, but a generator cabinet and a control panel, um, those are, are installed kind of in any convenient location on the vessel where we can find available space. Uh, however, for the installation at the Golden Bear, you saw that everything had to fit into that 20-foot shipping container. So we usually show this video to show how our system is modular. Those two chemical storage tanks, the generator cabinet, and the control panel can all be reoriented basically to fit into available space that, that we have to work with. Um, so I've included the design that we actually used for the installation at the Golden Bear. This is the engineering design, so there's a lot going on here. It's, it's kind of hard to see. But you can see how we took that typical installation and then reworked it to fit in the available space. So our chemical storage tanks are over on the right-hand side of the image. Um, the filter is in the front towards the left. Control panel is in the back left. And then the generator cabinet is kind of fit in between there. It's a little difficult to see. Um, but this is the same installation you would see on a commercial vessel. It's all, it's all the same materials. Um, the only difference is we able, were able to use temporary tanks for chemical storage tanks rather than stainless steel tanks that we would use on a permanent installation. And then here's just one last picture of it after it's been installed in the Golden Bear. Now I'm going to get a little bit into the testing process. So, as you saw, it was installed in February of 2015. In April of 2015, the system was commissioned. Um, at that point, it was turned over to the Golden Bear facility. So like the previous speaker mentioned, there's a lot of independence in this testing. Once that happened, Echochlor was not involved in the test process. We were able to oversee some of the testing, to observe, a better way to put it, um, but we weren't actually involved in the testing. They performed our first commissioning test in April of 2015, and that test was successful. That was a shipboard test, so that counted as the first of our shipboard testing program. Um, under the Coast Guard process, shipboard testing has to be performed over a period of six months, so that started our six-month time clock for shipboard testing. Between April and May of 2015, the vessel was at port in Vallejo, California, and we performed some of our land-based testing so our land-based testing uh, consisted of a series of 15 tests, five tests in three different water qualities. So we did five tests in fresh water, five tests in brackish water, and then five tests in saline water. Ten of those tests were performed in that spring, um, five tests in brackish water, and then five tests in saline water. Between May and August of 2015, the vessel left for its summer cruise. So the Golden Bear facility is used as a training vessel for cadets for the California Maritime Academy. So between May and August, the vessel sailed from the west coast of the United States to the east coast, to the Mediterranean and back. And at the ports of call that they called on, they performed our shipboard testing. So shipboard tests were performed in Vallejo, California, Boston, Massachusetts, Barcelona, Spain, in Naples, Italy. So it covered a couple different uh, water temperatures um, and the requirements for our shipboard testing. In September of 2015, the vessel returned to Vallejo, California. And my understanding is that's where it's been until today. It's been at port. Oops. Uh, we performed four of our freshwater land-based tests. We performed those in the fall of 20, uh, 2015. 
and then we performed that last shipboard test in October, that concluded that six month time period I had mentioned over which we had to perform our shipboard testing. And now lastly, I've summarized our results thus far and then our uh, path forward, the remaining steps we have towards type approval. So far, our results have been very consistent with our IMO test results. So I mentioned at the beginning, chlorine dioxide is very highly effective. During our IMO testing, there were actually no measured organisms in our shipboard test results for any of our uh, shipboard cycles. We've been very uh, happy to share those test results. We're currently seeing very similar results as we undergo the Coast Guard testing, which is what we had expected uh, due to the efficacy of chlorine dioxide. Um, our path forward includes conducting one last freshwater land-based test. So I don't know if you saw, I had included four tests that were conducted in the fall. Unfortunately, weather conditions started to change in California towards the end of last year. Water temperatures decreased, um, and so they didn't have the right organism concentrations to perform the testing. We've been waiting for those organism concentrations to increase again, and we're expecting any day now to be able to perform that last test. Hopefully this coming week, actually, we're gonna get a notification that we can conduct it. After that's completed, we'll have completed both our land-based and shipboard testing. We have environmental testing scheduled for April of 2016. And then at that point, our testing program will be complete. There will be report writing to be done, by, both by the subcontractors and by Echochlor. Uh, DNVGL will be reviewing all of this data that's been gathered and making a recommendation to the Coast Guard. And then Echochlor will submit our application to the Coast Guard. As I mentioned, our expectation is that we will submit it towards the summer of 2016. And then at that point, it's up to the Coast Guard to review our application, and our expectation is that they will issue Echochlor an approval for Coast Guard type approval. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.